Welcome back. This week in story time with Aunt Phil, the history of our military it plays a big role, of course, in the safety and economy of Alaska. But it wasn't always like that. As Laurel Downing Bill tells us, more than 75 years ago, Anchorage looked much different. June 27, 1940, Fort Richardson and Elmendorf Field are activated. Before that, though, Anchorage was pretty much your tiny little town. Yeah, the year 1938, there were only 4,000 people living here. No paved roads, no stop lights, traffic lights, and the police chief, he clocked speeders using a stopwatch. That all would soon change, though, as Anchorage would soon become a hub of military activity, Laurel. When World War II broke out in 1939, rumors ran rampant that Anchorage was going to finally get a base. After all, our delegate to Congress, Anthony J. Diamond, had been trying since 1933 to convince Congress to give us an airfield, planes, military personnel, and then also build a road down to the lower 48. But those pleas fell on deaf ears until 1940. That is when Adolf Hitler invaded and occupied Denmark and Norway. The, that was in early April. And then the next month, the Germans got into and occupied Belgium and Holland. France surrendered soon thereafter. Is that when Congress realized the need for a military in Anchorage? Yeah, that's when they finally realized that Russia, who was an ally of Germany at the time, lay only 55 miles off of Alaska, where the Seward Peninsula and the Chukaka Peninsula come out and touch each other. And the only military we had in Alaska at the time were a couple hundred GIs at the Chilkoot Barracks in southeast Alaska. And they were only armed with World War I Springfield rifles, so they couldn't have protected much. So Congress then decided, okay, we have to do something. So they appropriated their first $1 billion budget for the U.S. Army, and that included $12 million for a base in Anchorage. And that, in today's dollars, is like $211 million. We talked about Anchorage being a sleepy small town back then. This would change things, and we'd, we'd finally see this boom in population. The dizzying wage of 90 cents an hour drew lots of people into the area. In fact, in a year and a half, Anchorage's population had boomed to 9,000 people. Anchorage residents welcomed the first contingent of soldiers on a special Alaska Railroad train on June the 27th. The first Army Corps unit arrived early in 1941. And as they say, the rest is history. Many of those military folks stuck around after the war. They sure did, and they've contributed to our population growth, as well as to the economy of Anchorage, as well as all of Alaska. But here, they continue to serve and watch over us at what we now call Joint Base Elmendorf-Richardson. Pretty cool stuff. I mean, I'm thrilled to know that they're here and not uh, on, on a base somewhere that's four or five hours away, mm -hmm. or maybe in a different state. Me too. So always nice to see them flying over our friendly skies. Well, next week in story time with Ann Phil, the history of the first flight in Alaska and what the aviators were hoping would happen when that plane took flight.